Hello, and welcome back to Suzerain, the Republic of Sorlin. In today's episode, well, we've just, well, we've just done our Energy Protection Act at 48.9%. The EPA implementation in 1932 safeguards Sorlin's energy industry from excessive foreign ownership. The act was amended, sectioning the implement of foreign ownership in the national security sensitive energy corporations at 49%. During the tenure of President Reign, the limit for foreign ownership in national security sensitive corporation was increased to 49%. And we'll have to see how that goes. Erzeren. Discovery of new Ism remains. Remains of former black battalion members have been discovered in near the site of Ism, isn't it? The, decrease, the deceased have been identified as Swordish Armed Forces. Officers who were pardoned by President Seoul's government and were deployed in border security at the time. Investigations are ongoing to determine the case, the cause and circumstances of their deaths. The discovery has reignited interest in the Black Battalion's history, and authorities are urging anyone with information related to the case to come forward. Sarna Sarna is exhibiting strong potential for agricultural growth. The demand from neighboring Lesbia is increasing the suggesting, suggestion an opportunity for expansion in the region's agricultural sector. Local farmers are optimistic but the future about the future, but they also highlighted highlight the need for strategic investment and support the capital to capitalize on potential. There we go. Just wanna get that to stop popping up telling me, hey check this out, even though I already did. Manager of Guinea's regional tour. Minister of Rural Development Gus Banger is touring the Greeny region in Boris, Boren as part of his research for a new rural development plan. The tour includes several site visits and meeting with local officials and com communities. This initiative indicates a proactive approach to rural development, with a specific focus on understanding ground realities. The outcomes of this tour will contribute to the visions of the new development plan. Valgan. In Valgan, local farmers are seeking support as the city's agricultural industry is falling up behind. The farmers point out the lack of access to modern farm, uh, farming equipment and insufficient infrastructure are major hurdles. They believe that targeted support and the investment in investment could rejuvenate the agricultural sector and contribute to the region's economy. Untapped coal reserves. The Nedham Mining Corporation has discovered new untapped coal reserves in Marbell. The corporation suggests the investment in Lorne could significantly improve output, opening opportunities for economic growth in the region. The corporation is in the process of, of assessing the feasibility and potential of these reserves. The News. EPA increase, a risky endeavor. The decision to increase Energy Protection Act threshold to 49% by President Anton Rain is met by, with criticism. Critics argue that such a drastic shift could leave Swordland's strategic energy sector exposed to the dangers of foreign influence, with potential detrimental effects on the national security and income. What's necessary to invite foreign investment? It's equally crucial to safeguard a national interest. Decision makers must tre tread this delicate balance with utmost care. I know, that's why I put up 49% instead of getting rid of it. We do need to keep some safeguards, like, because at 49%, they can't get a majority. And that's what matters. Even if a foreign government manages to get the entirety of the 49%, if we have 51%, we have the majority still. And that's what matters. An opportunity for growth. In a despising turn, the government decision to raise the Energy Protection Act threshold to 49% has been hailed by some as an opportunity for growth. The move could stimulate foreign investment, potentially leading to a much needing boost in struggling energy sector. The change represents a significant shift in policy priorities, and it's yet to be seen whether it will bear fruit. EPA increased to 49%, a pathway to economic prosperity. The recent proposition to elevate the Energy Protection Act threshold to 49% merits substantial contemplation. This potential change doesn't shift, just shift a number, it opens doors for Swordland's economy, paving the way for global cooperation and potential prosperity. While the detractors may protest, the economic data suggests that a higher foreign ownership limit can drive economic growth, innovation, and healthy competition, vital for a robust function, functioning of a free market economy. Budget Allocation of the Government of Swordland Woo! Here it comes, the big one. The preparation for the government budget was finished. Most of the cabinet gathered in the White Room for an important occasion. Yeah, we've got a lot of people here. Nearly half a year had passed since my inauguration. The cabinet looked overworked. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for. It's finally time to discuss the government budget. I'm quivering in my loafers with excitement, Mr. President. 
Sadly, Peter Victor, Gus Binger, and David Whiskey won't be attending this meeting. They are working on the upcoming trade agreements with Villain and Agnolia. May the, may the Lord be with them. Sierra gave a barely disguised eye roll. Did you just roll your eyes at me, young lady? If I did, it's because religion has no place at a government budget meeting. I was barely expressing my wishes for a successful trade deal. Freedom of expression must be protected at all costs, must it not, Miss Morgna? Actually, in this case, I agree with Sierra, Miss Walda. Sierra flashed, flashed her an apprehensive smile. According to Sorland's laws regarding the separation of church and state, she broke off as she noticed this, that Simon, Lucian, and Iosif were looking at the three female ministers in stony silence. Ladies, let's leave the extravagant chit-chat for afternoon tea. Please leave your religion at the Moon Palace gates, Miss Graff. Lilius was about to utter a word, but a loud cough from Simon interrupted the, sil the silence in the room. Simon started loudly shuffling some documents around. Um, 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 papers. Well, oh, I have papers. Okay, there we go. Loudly shuffling documents around. Done. Um... They are all D and D Dungeons and Dragons related documents from current campaigns and past campaigns. So very important to this meeting. Um, <laughs> thanks to Simon's expertise, I'm sure we will achieve many great things today. Thank you for the compliment. Today is a big day. We must prioritize our spending wisely in order to achieve the goals we set as a government. While maintaining enough political support, if I may add, promises were made during the election. There are three options regarding the budgeting of the four main branches of government. It's either we increase, maintain, or decrease the funding. Increasing will result in an improvement of the branch, which will unlock new pol policy options. Maintaining will keep the funding, resulting in no visible change. Decreasing causes a loss of efficiency in the branch. Hmm. Can we rely on the private sector to support us? I'm sure we can do that to a certain extent in some branches, like education and health. Our universal health care system must be protected, not tainted by private greed or interest. We need we need to consider be considerate when it, making such grand choices that have ripple effects. We have to be careful as to what we fund, so we have research remaining for another investment project. Hmm. We should prioritize the most critical branches. Agreed. We have to make strategic decisions about our budget, since our resources are fairly limited. Yeah, they are. Before we begin our discussion, there is one more thing I need, want to voice my opinion on. As we manage the government budget, we can go, we can to go into debt to invest in different branches. However, under these circumstances, it would worsen the economic crisis if we push it too far. It's difficult for us to raise debt with the current unhealthy economy. We can increase the amount of debt we can take as an economy improves. Our administration should be physically conservative to avoid a crash. Measures of all Turkey have shown difficulties in appeasing voter groups. Given the current state of the country, improving economic situation is a political priority right now. More than ever, if we want to win the 58 election, the budget will also be applicable to our entire term. It is very crucial that we plan correctly. Let's begin, then. Which branch should we discuss first? Uh, let's talk about health care. Our healthcare system is vast and provides free service to most of our citizens. However, the quality of our health services is far worse in low-income and rural areas. Therefore, I think we should re receive more funding to address this disparity. I agree. I have recently begun an investigation into healthcare in Narbel, and the numbers are not good. If we don't increase spending on health services, we are at least need to maintain it. Otherwise, we are putting lives at risk. We have just started a new analysis on what would happen if pandemic struck Swordland. According to the results, if our healthcare facilities remain at their current state, the death toll would be unimaginable. I'm not even talking about the damage to the economy. This is a matter of life and death, Mr. President, and it should be treated as such. Very worrying. On top of what Pascal said, we need to remember that we promised to focus on healthcare during our election campaign. We need to follow through our promise to the people. Um, let us discuss our education. You might be noticing that I'm kind of going down the importance on um, what uh, what my character kind of sees as most important. 
Our education system is lacking, not only in funding, but also in modern curricular principles. Our outdated curriculum is wasting our youth. That is the reason why I advocate two things, an increased budget to improve access to education in rural areas, and new education reform. To be honest, Sordland is lacking compared to Arcacia and United Cortana when it comes to education levels. The backbone of any country is its people, and we need to protect our future. We need to ensure the new generation is well educated as well as their counterparts in more modern countries. Nonsense. Sordland, no, Sordland is still here because of this very system that you insult. How can you insult a system that teaches our sons and daughters the principles of national identity and pride? We won't be compared to other countries. Swordland is Swordland. I agree with Phileas. Swordland is Swordland. Uh, I agree with Sierra. It is high time to invest in education and act reforms. Um, let's discuss uh, law enforcement. I would like to have an increase in, I would like to have an increase in funding of law enforcement to increase the size of the police force and raise salaries. I have so many internal threats to tackle. I'm already stretching my units far too thin with the limited resources allocated to me. Ah, uh, you'll be fine. <clears throat> Law enforcement is certainly a high priority, however I feel tackling internal corruption is of far higher importance than increasing our police presence. Directing the funds to my department would solve the problem at, at root. If corruption is still rampant, all the police in the world won't help us. We need a specialized anti-corruption police unit, which we would create if the funds were directed to me. I agree with Miss Mordna. We should not reward a shukshur without his responsible for an ever-increasing number of human rights violations. Additionally, corruption is the reason our government in inefficiencies it needs to be tackled. The police are there to serve and protect the people of Sorland, Miss Walda. That is exactly what we were doing. More funding will allow us to take care of our police forces. It is quite a simple choice given the current status of the country. I agree with Nia. We need real solutions for real problems, like corruption. It's time to hear the opinions on the military. What is there to hear about? I already voiced my opinions. Rumberg is coming whether we like it or not. If not this year, next year. If not next year, the year after that. Mr. President, you and I have a shared responsibility to protect this nation from its enemies. And I until, intend to do so until my last breath. I will say this with certainty. If Rumberg doesn't make a move against Sorla in the two or three years, then my name is not Isosif Lancia. Isosif was beginning to lose control of the volume as well. There can be no arguments against increasing the budget for our army when there is an enemy on our doorsteps waiting for us to make one wrong move. Anyone who thinks otherwise is a fool. Mr. Lancia? Right. Pardon my theatrics, sir, but this is a serious matter. The future of the country is up to you, Mr. President. Well, here's my argument. The armed forces does nothing but eat away financial resources destined for our people while storking fears of an upcoming war. The issue of Flumberg can be solved diplomatically. What kind of message are we sending to them and the whole world if we suddenly start ramping up our military budget? That we are that we are ready to defend our nation, Miss Walda. Exactly. I agree with Sierra. We need to be diplomatic as possible. I've made up my mind about the budget. We can proceed. Very good. Very good talking points from everyone. Well then, the time to make the budget. The decision on the budget has come. Consider it with care, Mr. President. Simon placed a stack of papers on my table. I turned the first page. Okay, so we're going to decrease everything. Maintain. So yeah, increasing would put us at minus two. Jeez. Uh, but we are going to do that with health care. Um... You can distribute the budget between the four branches below. Increasing the budget will result in improvement of the branches, which also unlock new policy options. While maintaining may result in no visible changes, and decreasing may result in loss of efficiency. Certainly, the health system and healthcare quality have stagnated due to administrative inefficiencies. Increased service demand and increased divide in service quality between urban and rural hospitals, the average life expectancy has dropped significantly, with issues such as maternity death and disease outbreaks. They are not going to like this. Um, the recently culminating political tension between the different youth groups and socioeconomic pres pressures between multiple classes in society has increased the issues of the law enforcement systems. Police need to help keeping up with the increased crime rates. Simultaneously, judges and courts deal with an enormous growing backlog of legal cases. Okay, the once praised public education system the nation has suffered a significant setback of the last decade. The lack of new schools, high student-to-teacher ratios, low teacher salaries, and even the lack of classroom equipment in certain parts of the country cause massive divergence in the public education system. And, um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
there's gonna be some people that are really unhappy with my choices. The Swordish Armed Forces were the nation's most funded branch until the Alfonso government reduced the defense budget significantly. With the increase of saber rattling threats looming in the north by Rumberg and a growing presence of superpowers in the region, the critical deterrence of the SAF matters even more than ever. Does it though? So we're gonna increase healthcare, decrease law and order, maintain education, and decrease military. Oh boy. Prepare for some angry people, guys. But hey, we went through it and we actually increased our government budget. <laughs> Woo! Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, prepare. I had finished allocating the government budget, to the satisfaction of some cabinet members and the dismay of others. They and I knew this would define a significant part of our term. We have a good budget surplus left for investments and other needs. Very good. Agreed. Well then, let's start with law enforcement. Mm. Nia and Lilius were frowning when I looked at her. Lilius shook her head. I, I heavily disapprove. We are barely making ends meet at the security side, and we forced to reduce our force size and salary. The, re the, direction, the reduction of the budget might also put it in tight spot regarding our ability to handle the amount of court cases. Any statements on the matter, sir? Our new priorities called for reduction of law enforcement. These are disheartening changes. We will try to mitigate. Troubling times are ahead for our ministries. Let's hear the Minister of Education. Sierra was eager to comment. Keeping the same budget will just result in the same problems. However, prefer this over decrease. I'll try to reform the system with my own resources. Our future depends on our children. Education is the first step in the fight against ignorance. Your expertise and passion should enable you to make the necessary changes for improvement. Thank you for your confidence in me, but without extra funding, we'll have to make sacrifices, and our system will see the consequences. The military is next. <gasps> oh, God. Sierra clearly wasn't finished, but didn't interject. I also have chimed in. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we go. This is the man I expect to be most angry. Oh, boy. This is a disgrace. Rumberg is at our doorstep, and the armed forces already have a laundry list of problems. This was a grave mistake, and that we will surely pay for in time. Lucian seems as if he was about to say something, but looked down at his notepad when I eyed at him. Concessions had to be made with a military budget. The priorities have changed. This is, is there a higher priority than our national security? I doubt it. As if leaned back in his chair. Let's hear from Mr. Binnewell. Thank you, thank, thank you, sir. This health budget increase will help me focus on improvements. Our people will now be safer than ever. I'm also planning to tackle issues like the lack of rural hospitals and the recently worrying numbers of maternal deaths. Welfare must remain a priority for our term. There's no other way around it. I think Sierra gets why I kept her bounce budget. She'd like, well, I'd love to have had an increased budget, but you did increase health and keep my budget the same. So I think she's probably thinking I, I, you, you definitely are more with us than them. So I, I get it. So I think she's probably completely fine with me. Healthcare is very important for us, and we move forward. It will improve drastically. It feels invigorating to have the weight of the government behind my cause. That covers that covers all branches. Each minister will approach you with their respective policy requests and expectations over the next year. Thank you for your time and participation in this significant moment. This meeting is concluded. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time and effort. The ministers bid their farewells, some excitingly, others dejectedly. The cabinet slowly dispersed out of the white room. The budget for our term was concluded. All right. Well, there we go. Oh, boy. That's a lot. Stat increase. Situation updated. Situation updated. Situation updated. Policies updated. Policies updated. Oh, boy. Overview. Um, decreased funding. The budget allocated to the Swordish military has experienced a decrease, prompting a comprehensive assessment of the financial framework that supports the military's operation. This adjustment in funding may impact the allocation of resources, potentially requiring strategic optimization to maintain the structural in integrity and operation efficiently in the military. Discontent military personnel. Oh boy, that's bad news. The recent administrative actions taken by the government have caused significant discontent among the military personnel, with many feeling that their concerns and opinions have not been adequately addressed. Some of the main sources of frustration include changes to benefits, pay scales, and promotion criteria, as well as perceived lack of transparency and communication from higher-ups. Um, oh, consistent economy! 
Our econ economic strategy is closely aligned with the type of development doctrine that we are promoting, which emphasizes the importance of promoting sustainable economic growth, enhancing global competitiveness, and creating new opportunities for investment and job creation. Woo! Economy stuff going up. Increased health funding. The healthcare se sector has witnessed an augmented budget, opening up avenues for economic growth and improvements for in healthcare services. This increased funding is intended to enhance the quality of and accessibility of healthcare for the population of Sorland, leading to better healthcare outcomes and services. Yeah. Oh, you, well, good news so far. Um, the order hasn't changed at all from that, so that's nice at least. Um, news. 1954 Swordish government budget. After a marathon, 18 hours of negotiation, Swordish government budget for the current term has been finalized. The government envisions spending around 13 billion SR next year, almost 2 billion SR more than this year. The 1954 budget sees an increase in Swordish healthcare funding. The Minister of Health, one of the smaller ministers in Swords, and will see its budget grow more than expected, which will especially benefit the quality of healthcare services around the country. Minister of Health, Minister Mr. Benawal, has expressed his gratitude for the increase in healthcare budget, saying that this increase will benefit everyone in Swordland. Government introduced and cuts the police funding. Yeah, I, the Swedish government has prepared a budget of, for 1954, which also includes the first measures in the government economic development plans. This, the announced budget also includes a large cut to the law enforcement spending. Vice President Peter Victorin described the budget as a cornerstone and said that it is time to walk through the goals much more determinedly and strongly in a brief interview. Minister of Interior Ms. Graff and the opposition leader Mr. Kinber both criticized the decrease in security funding today in different public events. The current political climate and the violent attacks that continue throughout the country made everybody expect a clear increase in security funding. However, the situation seems to be largely ignored by the government. Look, we're gonna deal with it peacefully. We don't need we don't need military or guards. We're going to get through this peacefully through compromise and diplomacy. Lucian Gallag reported that so far they have been able to get in get in total 87 signatures behind the proposal. Efforts are underway to increase the support and to reach out to necessary members. Good start, good start. We'll get there. It just needs time. Chapter 2, A New Swordland. Alright. Let's see, what's going on around the world? Republic of Morella. Unidentified objects spotted close to the Quinali border. Security agencies in Morella have reported sightings of an unidentified object close to the Quinali border. The object was flying at high altitude and at very high speeds. Currently, there is no cl clarity on what the object should be or its potential implications. Some intelligence officers indicate that the sighting could be a potential CSP low-orbit satellite. The Morellian authorities are working with the Quinali counterparts to investigate the matter further. The Republic of Agnolia. Agnolian offshore drilling near Hadji increases tensions. Agnolia has started a new oil drilling operation very close to the disputed territories of Hadjiland. The tensions increased when the situation turned into a standoff between Vagland and Agnolian warships. It took several hours for the gridlock to be resolved, and the situation was de-escalated for now. Well, good. Glad to hear it. Laren. Military equipment outdated. The general staff has performed analysis on our borders to access to assess our military defense capabilities against a potential Rumberg attack. The rules show that our military equipment is outdated and needs replacement as soon as possible. The continuation of the warning report shows that in the event of an attack, our borders would be broken through easily, leaving the primary legions of Swordland exposed. The induct education rural region requires improvement. Sierra Waldo reports that the current education institutions in, cur in rural regions of Swordland have been largely neglected. As part of our analysis, the literacy rate of Swordland currently stands at 80%, while rural regions like Larbell has a literacy rate of only 64%. The lack of schools per capita also reflects these results. Urzerine. Bergian Special Zone Security has reported the discovery of large-scale religious network of BFF that encompasses all cities in Bergia. Under the guise of state-sanctioned priesthood, the BFS has recruited hundreds and possibly thousands of Galcodes worshippers to join the militist group, and converted hundreds of Nerti worshippers to the sect of Galcodeism. A dozens of arrests were made, but s since most police officers don't speak bloodish, it will be difficult to find the actual ringleader priests of the network. Many requests were made to ban British as a language from the sanctuaries. Governor Braun also requested Gulkanism to be banned as a religion. 
Binfi Regional Airport overcrowded. We have been receiving reports about the capacity of Binfi Regional Airport. The mayor of Binfi is preparing to put a request forward for the investment to build an international airport in the city. For a touristic region like Binfi, he claims that it would increase the overall prosperity of Sorglan. An unusual encounter, former President Seoul's open hospitality. In an unexpected encounter, local fishers were invited for tea by none other than former President Churkun Seoul himself. This seemingly ordinary exchange it revealed a side of Seoul seldom seen in public life. His humble and ward hospitality, even after his tenure, shines a light on the strong community spirit with, within Duryu Island. The incident underscores how Seoul remains a figure of interest in the public eye, influencing society beyond the confines of politics. 54 to 55 season ends. FC Gelsword claims the league title again. In a thrilling conclusion to the 54 55 season, the Sword National League football enthusiasts witnessed a remarkable display of sporting excellence. Excellence. After months of fierce competition, FC Gelsword emerged as the undisputed champion once again, submitting their status as a force to be reckoned with in Swordish football. Throughout the season, FC Gelsword showcased. Their unwavering, dedicated, and formidable skills on the pinch, securing an impressive series of victories that left their awkward opponents trailing behind. The star Gilsorian striker Harker Hakon Brenner once again claimed the top scorer of the league. Meanwhile, FC Anrica, the valiant runner-ups, put up a strong fight until the very end, displaying their own brand of thrilling football but couldn't manage to remove the 11-point difference between them and FC Gilsord. FC Arbery and FC Hulsord both ended the league with the same score, finishing as the 3rd and 4th place respectively, with only 2 points behind FC Anrica. And now we got a lot of Geopolitico. United Cortana's Congress addressed the State of the Union and Revolutionary Expressions. Kiwao, United Cortana, Corta, United Cortana recently hosted a massive congress bringing together representatives from all states to address the State of the Union and discuss a significant political decision concerning the concept of permanent revolution. United Cortana, a vast union of socialist republics spanning across the continent, is known for its rich tapestry of diverse culture and traditions. The Congress held in the nation's capital featured the unique traditions and customs of various states, including Cortania, Kiwao, Kadi, Zadiktek, Azatet, Yurzistan, Solivla, Chimaltigo, and Quinatia. Participants expressed pride in their heritage while demonstrating strong sense of unity under the government of the Communist Party, led by Chairman Leon. During the Congress, Chairman Milius proposed the Revolutionary Destiny Doctrine, a policy aimed at promoting the idea of permanent revolution and supporting social revolution in nearby states with early-stage capitalism. Senators from each state participated in a vote to determine the future course of the nation, ultimately passing the doctrine, signaling a new era of international involvement for United Cortana. The Congress served as a powerful reminder of the importance of unity in the face of global challenges, highlighting the strength that comes from embracing the diverse cultures and traditions that make up the fabric of the United Cortana. With the adoption of the Revolutionary Destiny Doctrine, United Cortana is supposed to become an even more influential force in the world stage. Prime Minister Alvarez of Lesbia visits Pales, offers support amid tensions with Frisia. In a show of solidarity, Prime Minister Alvarez of Lesbia visited the Grand Duchy of Pales and its leader, Axel Reinhardt, to affirm Lesbia's support in the face of mounting pressure from Frisia over the disputed gas fields. As part of the ATO's alliance, Lesbia has offered assistance to Pale in resolving the ongoing gas fields dispute and maintaining regional stability. During his visit, Prime Minister Alvarez proposed several measures to address the situation, including joint exploration and development of the disputed gas fields, establishing a neutral operation panel, and promoting economic cooperation among Macopan nations to reduce reliance on the contested resources. He also pledged Lesbia's commitment to defending Pale's sovereignty and territorial integrity if the disputes were to escalate. The visit has sent a strong message to Rizia, warning them against further aggressive actions and encouraging a diplomatic resolution to the dispute. However, it remains to be seen whether Rizia will accept these proposals and engage in dialogue with Pales and Lesbia to reach a peaceful settlement. Vagsland Navy forces Agnolian drill ship to retreat from Hegeland. Helms Vagsland Navy Chief Admiral Hurt Hexer on Tuesday said said an annoying drilling ship was driven away from Vagsland's exclusive economic zone in Nurmlander Sea recently, asserting that such activities will be dealt with swiftly and sternly. The ship entered the area without Vagsland's Navy's prior permission. They said the illegal occupation of Hedgeland does not give Agnolia the right to claim the seas. 
Our stance has been that if you do anything in our region, we you will have to notify us or take our permission, the Navy chief said at a press conference without elaborating further on the incident. Since 1950, there has been a permanent presence on the Vagaslandian Navy in the Marquian Sea region, mostly in the form of anti-privacy piracy force, expressed are concerned about the ignoring increasing forays around Hedgeland, which they believe may trigger a heavy response from Vagsland. And then Arcacia fires the import I ICMBM. Dwight Walker has announced the first successful Arcacian intercontinental ballistic missile test, which was conducted at the military test site at the Nam Atoll in the middle of the uh, ASEAN. No. Nah. The fired missile codenamed Missile 4 flew several thousands of kilometers towards the direction of United Kratana before crashing down at the sea close to the abandoned radioactive Rostov Island. The missile test indicates that Arcacia wants to send a message to United Kratana about island bases in the middle of the Oceana while displaying the Arcacian military technology as advanced. Will Arcacia be able to catch up to United Kratana in the face of the growing contentious situation between the superpowers? Who knows? We'll have to find out. But for now, uh, I think this is a good time to go ahead and end this episode. I hope you enjoyed, and if you do, did, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button. And as always, peace.